Good morning. I think that I'm live. Good morning. Uh, now, now I am. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Tuesday, June the 14th. It's flag day. Flag day. I'm going to have to bring my flag in here and I forgot it. It is flag day. Um, I'm Tony Taylor. I'm coming to you from Greenville, South Carolina. Um, and I'm here to share a devotion with you, to pray with you and for you, and to lift up some gratitude and to drink some coffee. Tracy and I got up early this morning and went out and weeded like six o'clock and it was cool. And did some work in the yard. So now that's done. It's a, we're going to be like a hundred here today. In 1955, oops, that's June 15th, a towering presence, G.K. Chesterton was an excitable and opinionated man who was also blessed with a sense of humor that has much to offer a world polarized by politics. Oh, we know that, don't we? <clears throat> he passionately critiqued liberals and conservatives and maintained a lively and genuine friendship with George Bernard Shaw with whom he disagreed on nearly everything. <clears throat> Chesterton set out to rethink the faith, but laughingly compared his quest to a voyager who set out to find a lost land only to rediscover England. At 48, he formally converted to Catholicism. Amid very serious discourse, he insisted that despair comes not from being weary of suffering, but from being weary of joy. He died on this day, and his epitaph, Epitaph describes him as one who helped restore the world to sanity by exaggerating whatever the world neglects. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as a day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. May our minds fix, stay fixed on you, the perfecter of our faith. May our minds stay fixed on you, the perfecter of our faith. Good morning, Sarah. So good to see you. Praying for you this morning. Good morning, Loni. So good to see you and praying for you. Um, share your prayer concerns and your gratitude in the chat box, and we'll lift those up this morning. May our minds stay fixed on you, the perfecter of our faith. The psalm today is Psalm 73, 1 through 6, and I'm reading from the Book of Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. Truly, God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had never, nearly slipped. I had almost tripped and fallen because I envied the proud and saw the prosperity of the wicked. For they suffer no pain, and their bodies are sleek and sound. In the misfortunes of others, they have no share. They are not afflicted as others are. Therefore, they wear their pride like a necklace and wrap their violence around them like a cloak. May our minds stay fixed on you, the perfecter of our faith. May our minds stay fixed on you, the perfecter of our faith. The Old Testament reading today is from Deuteronomy 29, 16 through 29. Good morning, Kimberly. I'm so glad you're here this morning. We lifted you up in prayer yesterday. You had a great first chemo treatment. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that great news. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up Kimberly Clay with thanksgiving of her first chemo uh, treatment. Lord, keep her well and strong and her positive attitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Good morning, Clara. Um, praying for you today, Clara. Um, Clara needs needs our prayers this morning as well. She had to put dear Molly down last yesterday, and um, uh, I, we all know what that feels like to lose a beloved pet. Um, she'd been right there with Molly through all this chemo uh, for lymphoma and it was uh, Molly was suffering too much and uh, so we're gonna lift Clara up in prayer this morning Lord we lift up Clara this morning in prayer in her grief and grieving in her sadness Lord 
lift up the memories, the laughter, the fun memories, the memories of Molly and, and how she affected Clara and Jean. She was such a blessing, Lord. We lift Clara up today to focus on the good things, the wonderful times, the little stories, and remembering how she got Molly and how Molly was brought to her. And she gives Molly now back to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Um, we're on Deuteronomy 29. You and yourselves know how we lived in Egypt and how we passed through the countries on the way here. You saw among them their detestable images and idols of wood and stone and silver and gold. Make sure there is no man or woman, clan or tribe among you today whose heart turns away from the Lord our God to go and worship the gods of those nations and make sure there is no root among you that produces such bitter poison. When such a person hears the words of his, this oath, they invoke a blessing on themselves, thinking, I will be safe, even though I persist in going my own way. They will bring disaster on the watered land as well as the dry. The Lord will never be willing to forgive them. His wrath and zeal will burn against them. All the curses written in this book will fall on them and the Lord will blot out their names from under heaven. The Lord will single them out from all the tribes of Israel for disaster, according to all the curses of the covenant written in the book of the law. Your children will follow you in later generations, and foreigners who come from distant lands will see the calamities that have fallen on the land and the diseases with which the Lord had afflicted it. The whole land will be a burning waste of salt and suffer. Nothing planted, nothing sprouted, no vegetation growing on it. It will be like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, Adma and Zeboim, which the Lord overthrew in fierce anger. All the nations will ask, what has the Lord done this? Why has the Lord done this to this land? Why this fierce burning anger? And the answer will be, it is because the people abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the covenant he made with them when he brought them out of Egypt. They went off and worshipped other gods and bowed down to them, gods they did not know, gods he had not given them. Therefore, the Lord's anger burned against this land, so that he brought on it all, he brought on it all the curses written in this book. In furious anger and in great wrath, the Lord uprooted them from their land and thrust them into another land as it is now. The secret thing, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. So the secret things, the secret things that we don't know yet. Um, our minds probably won't, would not understand understand it. Um, some things are just not necessary for us to know right now. Um, so the caution here is to not uh, covet other idols or worship other idols. Um, through confession, through... Um, um, being positive in the way that you live uh, can help you stay focused. Clara, I hope you're doing as well as can be expected this morning. Okay. Acts 8, 1 through 13. if it's going to rain here or not. It gets cloudy and then it gets sunny again. Acts 8, 
1 through 13. <clears throat> this is where we left off yesterday. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city, the city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed, so there was great joy in that city. Now, for some time, a man named Simeon, Simon, excuse me, had practiced sorcery in the city and amazed all the people in Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great. And all the people, both high and low, gave him their attention, and, he, and they exclaimed, This man is rightly called the great power of God. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his sorcery. But when they believed Philip, as he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. And Simon himself believed and was baptized. And he followed Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and the miracles that he saw. I believe that's where we're stopping today, yes. Yes. Now, these were Jewish Christians, first Jew and then Christians. Um, and they were really still unsure whether the non-Jews or the Gentiles uh, and half-Jews could receive the Holy Spirit. They still weren't sure about that. It wasn't until Peter's experience with Cornelius that the apostles became fully convinced that the Holy Spirit was for all people, all people. So they're still trying to understand this and what it means with the Holy Spirit and what it means with the Holy Spirit so it here's something for you the persecution the persecution of Stephen and the other apostles really was pivotal in spreading the gospel the persecutions helped spread the gospel um, so it forced people out of their homes. Uh, they, they had to be scattered. So it sent them around and out to spread the word. So um, you, you think out of something bad comes something good. Out of something bad, God finds a way of working something good. Um, And when we think about Moses and we think about, um, you know, what he suffered uh, and out of that uh, suffering, he was able to deliver the people who um, for 40 years in the desert wandering around. Um, I'm looking for prayer concerns. Oh, I needed to move my um, cursor down. Good morning, Jana. So glad to see you here this morning and praying for you. Good morning, Linda Newman. So glad to see you and praying for you. Good morning, Rhonda. So glad to see you here and praying for you. Oh, I'm so glad everybody got there safe. I loved your Lunchables. I love the Lunchables that you posted. When I looked at the scripture this morning and was reading about it, um, I'm back in the Let Go book by Matt Miofsky. And there actually was a chapter, chapter seven, that's called The Turnaround, Lessons from Low Points in Life. 
Um, so think about a low point in your life. And some of us are experiencing them right now. Um, and listen to this. Our culture may value self-sufficiency, but it is not a value of God's. Our culture may value self-sufficiency, and it does, but it is not a value of God's. God uses the wilderness to teach us what we that we need God and that we aren't meant to do it alone. So we're not meant to do it alone. What happens then when we get into this low place is it focuses us on accepting help, help from people in our lives or help from someone that God brings to our life. Um, so it forces us to reach out to other people and people that maybe we haven't given an opportunity in our life. Um, so when you think about when you've been low and you reach out for someone, it allows both of you an opportunity to, to connect with you and to connect with God. Um, so I want to remind you that when people are going through low places, it is a time for connection. It is a time to reach out. Um, you know, uh, it's important to take the time to do that. Um, uh, Kimberly, pray for a lady named Sherry that I had chemo with yesterday. She has... 12 immunotherapy treatments yet to go. Lord, we lift up Sherry, a friend of Kimberly's, Lord. We lift her up um, in your care, Lord. Give her the strength. Uh, give, give her the positive thinking that she needs to get through these treatments, Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Kimberly, you, you spread your positive, positive thinking um, when you go in there. Uh, let me see if I find my place here. Here we go. So God is not done with you yet. There is something yet ahead, a new land, a new reality, and a new beginning. Um, Low points show us our strength and creativity, what we can do uh, from that low place, where we can go, what we can do from it. Um, I wanted to share this with you. Um, let's see if I can find it now. <clears throat> Low points, listen to this, low points shatter our idols. Um, you know, the, the story of the golden calf. God instructed Moses to leave the people at the base of the mountain and then climb up to meet God. On the mountain, God spoke to Moses, giving him the law. And this was not a quick trip up a hill and back. The Bible says Moses made several trips up Mount Sinai. And on at least one occasion, he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. During this time, the Israelites finally hit their breaking point. They had listened to God. They had followed God. And now they were waiting for God. Finally, they simply couldn't do it anymore. Instead of reaching, instead of reaching the promised land, they were hundreds of miles south of their goal at the base of the mountain in the wilderness. Moses asked just to wait a little longer while he was up there getting a revised direction from God. But where was he? Why had he been up there so long? They were frustrated, out of faith, no longer willing to wait. They finally did the very thing God had asked them, begged them not to do. They gave up on God. They gave up on God. God saw what was happening at the base of the mountain and alerted Moses. He told them that he had better get down that mountain for the people had made a grave mistake. So Rose, Moses rushed down and there he was with them with a golden calf um, there are good things in our lives that can be idols it doesn't have to be something we made um, even good things can be idols in our life if if we put them ahead of God 
hopefully put them ahead of God. Um, I'm looking for other prayer requests this morning. So God is not done with you yet. Even in your low place, God is not done with you yet. He has a plan for you. Um, and it is at that time that we reach out to others. We reach out to people in our lives and allow them to hold on to us, to hold on to us, that give us the strength that we need, that we can't do by ourselves. We weren't meant to do this alone. We need our friends and we need our family. Um, I'm looking to see who else has joined us. Oh, light rain. Good for you, Loney, in Kingsport. All right. I'm um, looking for other prayer requests. This is um, a, a last quote from G.K. Chesterton. The whole modern world has divided itself into conservatives and progressives. The business of progressives is to go on making mistakes. The business of conservatives is to prevent the mistakes from being corrected. <laughs> he had a great sense of humor. Lord, free us from our self-deception. Attune our hearts to your spirit that we might remember how you humbled yourself and learn to serve one another, whatever our disagreements. Amen. I want to lift up Holly Bowers this morning. She's um, struggling right now with her health and with trying to discern and make some decisions. So I'm lifting up Holly Bowers this morning for you to pray for. Um, she needs our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up Holly for strength, Lord, for guidance, for comfort. Let her know that you are there, Lord. When she cries out, where is God? Let, let you show her where you are, that you are there. Let her feel your presence and that of the Holy Spirit. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we lift up the people of Red Lodge, Montana, in the suffering of the flood, Lord. We lift them up to you in care. Um, bring, the, bring them care, Lord. Bring, bring people to help them, Lord, to touch their lives, to save lives, and to help them through um, this flooding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Thank you, Janice, for letting us know that. Um, Miss Betty's going to the doctor tomorrow. David will be there tomorrow and take her to the doctor and to get a PET scan on Thursday. I don't know if she's watching this morning. I haven't seen her this morning. Um, but she's hopefully going to get, we're going to get some answers. And that's great. If we can get some answers um, she's not feeling her strong self she's um, a little tired tired and um, um, it takes a lot of energy to do everything I think right now but um, let's lift let's lift her up in prayer um, Lord in your mercy we lift up Miss Betty we lift up Betty Taylor Lord um, for comfort Lord for strength, for positive thinking, Lord, um, in this struggle. Lord, be with her. Be with her caretakers, Lord, and be with David. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Thank you for asking. I thought I had seen her, but I don't think I've seen her on this morning. All right. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing once again at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for everything that you do for each other. You are such holy friends. Such holy friends. I um, Jean was going... Jean was going to the doctor this morning, so I guess that's where the Wilkies are this morning. Um, 
Lord, in your mercy, we lift up Alan and Jean Wilkie this morning. Uh, I know that Jean is at the doctor. Uh, bring her a good report, Lord, uh, for her osteoporosis. Lord, give her good results. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Thank you all. I will see you tomorrow on Wednesday, June 15th. Happy Flag Day. Happy Flag Day. Bye.